begin to from within God. We come against any distractions that might prop up in the middle of this service, God, so that you can have your way in this house. Peace, joy in the house of God. Let your anointing rest like the dew on the leaves in this house today, God. Allow what I have been put into my heart, God, to be revealed. Go beyond what I've prepared for, God. Go beyond what I've prepared for in Jesus' name. So I'm literally just going to piggyback off of what Sister Kathy kind of left off in regards to what God is saying. Because once you do a lesson on miracles, what do you expect is going to happen? When you teach a lesson on faith, what do you expect is going to happen? What you teach a lesson on trials is what's going to happen. So, that's why a lot of people won't do any message except for prosperity. That way you only get prosperity, right? If all you have is water, you end up with a flood and nothing can grow. Even too much water and grass looks green for a little while, but sooner or later, even the roots can't stay inside the dirt. So there's no foundation to that. So Kathy's talking about miracles, and when Brother Bud approached me six months ago, I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Six months later, I'm like, okay, this is my busy season. God, why are you doing this now? I was like, all right. So he sat down about three weeks ago, and we were... Kelly and I were leaving on the cruise, and he goes, what do you think about next week? I was like, I'm gone. I said, if Kathy's done, you'll have to take one week, and then I'll come back. He goes, no problem at all. She ended up going longer than that. So everything works out. And uh, I had five things. This is what I said to Bud. He goes, he goes I kind of need you to fill in between where Kathy is and whoever's going to go to next because they need more time. I said, all right. He goes, what do you got? I'm like, well... I said, I've got five things in the cooker. How's that? He goes, well, I kind of expected that. And I said, so usually they're for me. So what kind of God puts on my heart, I'll kind of search out and put it on my notes. And I'll make notes during praise and worship. And, and I'll go back to that. And when the opportunity comes, because that's what I said to Bud. I, says, I said, I got something. I said, you just give me the opportunity. And I'll, says, I'll zero in on what God wants to say. He goes, perfect. So I'm driving. And... I, I've learned to be very last minute when it comes to putting things to paper when it comes to God. Because he just kind of goes, you know, play three weeks in advance and all of a sudden, you know, a week before, it's like, ah, you know, sharp left. Uh, and God takes that, you know, sharp right hand turn. It's like, okay, now you got to do it all over again. Even though it's a good learning process. So I'm driving and um, I was going to get... Uh, something at the mall at lunchtime and I was coming back, I was getting on the Mass Pike and, and I started thinking about what now, how, and now it's time to start zero things down and start writing some things down and, uh, and get it going. So I'm thinking about what Kathy's been talking about and I had a thought and the thought I had was why don't we see the kind of miracles in 2018 that we used to see and hear about in the old days? And I hate even saying it like that because that does not even imply that God's not doing miracles now. So hear my heart. Why is it that we don't see the miracles that we hear about in the scriptures? And the thought that came to me was, it's because... We don't think they'll happen. 
And I said, okay, God, I says, I am guilty of that maybe some of the times. I said, but I really, you can only take your own temperature. And I'm willing to bet your temperature on one day will be different than on another day. Because these some days, it's like, whoo, I can trust God for that. Next day, it's like, got a cold coming on. It's like, okay. So the thought I had was, and this is what God put in my heart. I want you to talk about the mentality and the attitude of the mind. And I was like, all right. All right, I think I got a book on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look through my bookshelf. So I want to talk about the mind with how we think. And I really want to stay here. This is where I feel God wanted us, me, for the time being, to stay with the mind, our thought process, our thoughts can be one thing, but actions can be another. Actions will always speak louder than words every single time. Do not tell me that that is not true because that is a lie. You say you're in a good mood and you're the grumpiest person, you can't talk to anybody, you're all disgruntled and everything like that. Actions speak louder than words every time. Now, here's the flip side of that. An attitude of gratitude can come off as being haughty and overconfident. Isn't that true? He's gonna start already. Isn't it true, though? Your mind, what you do, what you say, is one thing. Now you get somebody that's overconfident, they get called haughty. So, we have no microphone. It's charging, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, when, when you when you said all when you said all of that, Ronnie, I I was uh, I immediately I I heard what the Lord whispered in my ear. I remember all the days that we fellowship with Brother Vonner, and if I ever met a person who knew who he was in Christ, it was him. But everybody that didn't know him, I mean closely, thought he was egotistic. That's another one right there. Thought he was unapproachable. Thought he was all of these things just because he was sure of himself. And he realized that. That was one of his biggest battles because he wanted to be close to people. But people didn't want to be close to him because he was sure of who he was. The thing that most you ask about, about uh, why we don't see miracles, I'm going to tell you why. My fault, your fault. We don't think we need them bad enough. We think we can get along just, just right with the power of the mind. We can go to church just by taking thought. We can worship just by taking thought. You want me to get a little Pentecostal today? Today's Pentecostal Sunday, you know. We can talk in tongues just by taking thought. But the one thing you can't do is function the supernatural by taking thought. Thank you. All right, so we're going to keep. Oh, I, I, I knew you could. There was a lady who wrote a wonderful book called The Battleground of the Mind. Shh. I'm 
leading up to my story. So in the process of all of this, we really, I was trying to ask God for direction because I really didn't know how I was going to do something like this. Um, and still, you can't teach somebody to be positive. Let's think about this for a second. We were just talking about changing a tire in the car. I could teach somebody how to change a tire. You can't teach somebody how to be positive. That can't be taught. It can be encouraged. It can be strengthened. It can be scripturally based. It can be say this is situations if you don't think positive. But you cannot teach somebody to be positive. Do you know how frustrating that is? I l just want to throw this out really quick. How many times have you and I worked with somebody? I can't do that. Mm. That, that job, I can't handle that job. So you know what Danny says? Give it to Ron, he'll do it. Yeah. That's the truth. It's impossible. When he quotes something, he'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to give that one to anybody else but Ron. <laughs> you can teach but the person has to be teachable. Absolutely. If you're not willing to listen, obey, we don't like obey, that's wow, that is a bad word to say in 2018, that's obey. Okay, how about this, submit. Same word, same definition. That's, that's a bad word. Don't say obey. And I'm getting off the track here. So I got in the car and I was like, okay, I got a book about that. So I picked up the book and the same one that he was just talking about is the battlefield of the mind. So I'm like, okay. So I'm going through my bookshelf that I've got and I've got the three battlegrounds. I'm like, okay. And I start looking at it. I was like, no. And that's not it. I says, I... I Want to stay in that positive thinking mentality. Now, can you change your situation by positive thinking? I think you can not will something to happen, but I think you can position yourself to be so positive that you can believe that can happen and then it'll happen. Does that make sense? Positive thinking isn't going to change God's mind, even though it's a good thing. Because how many times have we had a good idea, but it wasn't a God idea? Too many times. It has to line up with the Word of God. Well, having kids lines up with the Word of God, we'll get there. So I'm like, okay, God. So now I got the two books in front of me, and I'm like, and I'm reading through the things. I was like, no, this is all about spiritual warfare. Now listen for a second. Two books God brings to my attention here, both about spiritual warfare. And God, I felt, let me say it that way, I felt God was really zeroing in on a positive mind, positive attitude, and how it can change your circumstances, and how it can help you get through the bad situations that you're going through by having a positive attitude. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm like, I really didn't feel God was going to go down this spiritual warfare mentality wrestling with powers that be and wrestling against the flesh or not against the flesh against spiritual mind and I'm like and then I sat in the service last night and do not tell me that it's going to be a piece of cake to prophetically do what he just said it was going to be that is spiritual warfare right there and that is spiritual warfare at its root right there that's the foundation of what's going to, what what he's talking about so now I got a whole other understanding and like, okay, now I understand where God started with the, the mind and the positive thinking. And now he gives me these two books. I'm like, nope, that's not God. It's something else. And then I hear the service last night. I was like, all right, I'm open to that. But for today, I'm just going to stick with what God originally put on my heart to do. This book I heard the ladies did already. Kelly's like, you can't do that. We already did that. And I was like, but not every person in this room has done the battlefield of the mind. Because this is my first time reading it. Yeah. You would teach it differently than I would teach it. Because you're coming from a woman's point of view. I'm coming from a guy's point of view. 
So she's coming from a mother and a mom and a home and a wife's point of view. I'm coming from a job, a business, and a man's point of view. So the, the basis is the same, but it, the input comes in from different avenues. So her insight is different than my insight, but yet the insight is still pointed at God. Our actions are a direct result of our thought. Not everything we think is God. God, now, I'm a Christian, I work in a business, and I work for a company, and my thoughts are not always on God. Do you know why? Because I'll cut my fingers if I'm constantly thinking about something else. A wheel can blow up right in my face. I can cut my fingers on the tool that I'm making. I can cut my fingers on the, tool, on the, the wheel that's spinning at 3,000 RPMs. So there has to be a balance. You can't be all spiritually minded. You'll be no earthly good. How many times have we heard that? A negative mind will produce a negative life. This is where I felt God was going, and I still do. There is a negative mind and a negative thought pattern will produce a negative life every single time. You cannot tell me different. It's light outside. Don't tell me that's dark. It's that blatant that a negative mind will produce a negative life. And you know what the scary part is? And this is what frustrates me, is the choice is yours. I can talk to you scripturally all the time. We can have conversations about everything until we're blue in the face. And if it doesn't change your mind and change your thought pattern, you're at fault. Now that's hard, but that's true. I'm almost 50 years old. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I had the desire when I was 20 and 19 and 18. We can't change time. I get that. I wish I had the tenacity, the boldness, the desire, all those things I have now, I wish I had them. But it's still not too late. I can't change the past, but I sure can change my future. I can alter my future, I can't change my past. What I did before, nothing's going to change that. What happens today and tomorrow and the next week is what changes. I remember calling up the hospital, talking about Sam, and she's like, well, let's talk about, you know, what possibilities. No, you tell me what's happening today, and that's what we're going to deal with today. That's all we're going to deal with. What was his oxygen? What was he at? How did he sleep last night? That's what I want to know. I did a charity benefit on Friday night, and Kelly came and assisted me. My friend's got this daughter i've known him since i was six years old played t-ball together his father was our coach really really nice very soft-spoken nice guy his daughter literally within one week developed that's the word i wanted something in her body they still don't know where it came from 16 years old something is destroying her Stomach, she has a stomach pump for her digestive system and her stomach itself. They can't figure out everything that is going on with her. He's back and forth to Chicago because that's where all the specialists are. So they raised tons of money for this person, for, for Emily. Um, I'll get, I'll get more into that. So we're lining up the volunteers for taking pictures, and we're going down the line like this. And, and I wish I was this sharp when I was younger. And I, I'm going down the line. I'm lining everybody up, shortest, tallest, front, back, everything else like that. And I'm doing the things that I normally do, laughing, joking, trying to get people to relax. And I look at this lady. It's like, I know you. She goes, mm, I don't know you. And I was like, ah, you look familiar. It's the guy... I've never seen you before. And obviously I've changed. Um, 
And I went, I went on, and I'm, I'm going back to doing what I'm doing, and I'm lining everybody up. So later on in the night, she comes walking up on the side of me, and she's taking a picture of what I was taking a picture of. And I says, um, I said, you still don't remember me? She goes, not at all. I said, where are you from? She says, Wilbraham. I was like, no, that's not it. Maybe I seen her at a wedding or something like that. I said, what's your name? She goes, Dusty. I said, Dusty. I said, you took care of my son. 16, 17 years ago in the NICU at Bay State. She goes, how do you remember that? Oh, I said, I've never forgotten those days in my life. When you live and breathe that kind of stuff, I said, I have never forgotten that. She goes, oh my God, you're Samuel's dad. She goes, now I remember you. She said, you put a scripture on the front of the isolate every single day that he was in there. I said, that's me. She goes, how is he now? swiping through my phone. She goes, that's him? I says, yeah, he's taller than his mom. She goes, wow, that is so nice to hear. I remember what he was like. It's so nice to hear that kind of a story. So we're talking about a positive mind. We're talking about negative lives produce, negative thoughts and minds produce negative lives. Our, our actions are a direct result of uh, our actions and thoughts. Oh, you don't want the mic? I don't. Okay. Do you know what causes negative mind? Fear. That is the number one. Re how about not only fear, how about, well, you know what? That would be fear. I was going to say not knowing. That's fear. The fear of the unknown. Um, yeah, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? The fear of not understanding. How about the fear of not being able to believe? If you don't believe for a miracle, you will not see the miracle. Now, can I repeat another scripture? Yes, absolutely. There's another scripture. Whatever you fear, will come upon you. And where does it start? Negativity. Fear God. He'll come upon you. And the fear of God is the beginning of beginning wisdom. Of wisdom. 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 When I'm putting this all together, I'm trying to stay in the vein of positivity. And I'm not saying that there's no other things to talk about when it comes to spiritual warfare. But I think if you can start with your mind first, it is. But you know what I found in the scriptures? In Ephesians chapter 6, I'm, I'm going to read it because it was, I had to think about why God did something last. Let me read this. Ephesians chapter 6 is the whole armor of God, okay? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Put ye on the whole armor of God. That doesn't just stand there and say, okay, God, dress me. That's inactivity right there. I don't have to do anything except and expect God to do something for me. Yes. Which part? Uh, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah, in our minds. I see that now. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. And I said, put on the whole armor of God. We have to do that. And you know when you have to do it? Every single day. There's putting on your whole armor of God. So let me get on to this because I'm running out of... 
I'm going to have to go more than one week. Is that okay? <laughs> Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein is able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh, I'm going I'm to keep going. But I found it funny that the last thing that was mentioned was putting on the helmet last, then picking up the sword. Helmet wasn't first. Which kind of backwards to my thinking of saying, okay, we have to put, fix this first and everything else will fall into place. But the helmet was put on second to last because the last thing you pick up is the sword. So I found that kind of interesting that it wasn't the first thing to be put on. And the only thing I could think of is when you think about a knight in shining armor and a knight when he gets dressed into full armor... All this other stuff gets put on because that helmet is so top-heavy, I would imagine it would go like this and fall over. So maybe our thoughts can't get too far ahead of us because it'll take us out of alignment. I don't know. Since this is my lesson, this is my interpretation of what I feel. <laughs> you have your own thoughts. That's, what it, that's the bottom line. If we are going to live in this world in 2018, if we are going to see the miracles that God has for us, you first must believe it's possible. And do not, here's my other notes, be upset when it doesn't happen overnight. I could relate so much to what Brother Bill said last night about Samuel and Hannah. Because I named Samuel because of that story, because of that whole barrenness. We, we had prophetic word, timed words that didn't come to pass, and lots of prophetic word about it happening. So it was already birthed inside of us. And on a daily basis, we had to not remind God, but bring that prophetic prayer to pass on a daily basis. So we can relate to what he, I didn't know was prophetically declaring something like that, but we never took no for an answer. When we felt the timing of God was different, we were like, okay, it's been eight years. Do we want to continue doing this or seek other options that God might open up? Adoption, um, something like that. So we prayed about it. We said, okay, God. Now, hear my heart. I'm not saying put a time limit and a put a cutoff time. And I'm not saying that's what you should do. We felt what God was saying to us. And we did not have a check in our spirit about it. That's the difference. This is the only reason why we did what we did. So don't say, oh, Brother Ron said you should put a time limit on it. And if God doesn't come to pass by that time, then it wasn't God. That's not what I said hear my heart. We felt God was saying in this time frame, we would seek other measures. So we made plans. We were going on a vacation. So we had to get doctors all lined up. And we were like, if that... Oh, there. Okay. All right, so, so I'm not saying it's okay to put a time frame on God. What I'm saying is if you're earnestly seeking and earnestly praying about it and you don't feel a check in the spirit about it, everything we did was submitted to the leadership. We always talked to Pastor and Sister Fran and we were like, and you know what they told us? What do you feel God's saying to you? They can't, if he has insight, he'll tell you. You might not like it, which is probably why we don't ask sometimes. Um, that's another subject. Um, but we felt 
after eight years that this is where it was going to be. We went through the doctors, did the in vitro, did all this. If we said, okay, God, if this does not become a positive result, we are going to seek other measures and seek your face in another direction. Even though we still had the prophetic word to have children. He never said how it was going to come. See the loophole that's in there? We can always try and interpret what God is saying. We can always try and interpret what the prophet said to us. So, we're like, if, we don't, if this doesn't happen, we're going to do this. So we decided that that's what we we're going to do. So we called up the doctors, and when they called us back and said, um, with the test results, uh, it was positive. So we were like, what? Never had a positive result ever before. So, yes, we had to wait eight years just to get pregnant, but in hindsight, I'm thankful that we never had a baby and lost it because that's a whole other level of... So, however God decides to do things is up to Him. Okay? You have to seek God for yourself, but if your mind is not lined up with His will, we will think wrong. And your thoughts can only be determined by you. This is what I say to my kids all the time. What you put in is what you get out. It really is. It really is. Because now that takes... If we were like... Mm, I'm trying to be careful here. Garbage. That's a good principle. That's a good principle. We'll, we'll stick with that one. But if we're trying to do and say and proclaim what is if my desire and God says God says you're going to be strong in the word and strong in the Lord. If I desire to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I think everybody knows who that person is, but I never pick up a weight, nothing. You could have a promise from God that this is what I want to do and fulfill in your life, and you never lift a finger in that direction why would God uphold his promise to you? There's conditions to God's prophetic word, and there's conditions to God's physical and written and scripture word. If I desire to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the natural, and I never lift up a weight, and never go to the gym, and never eat right, why would that happen? You're right, it would. Same with the Spirit. If we are not constantly, and I say, I'm using the word remind, bring to God's remembrance what you said about us for me, for my life, for my kids, for my home, for something else. I, for, since the beginning of the year, and then um, I felt a change, almost like a click, like another notch in the prophetic. In my own personal inner being. I felt there was a click. <coughs> I'm hearing things differently. But if I got in here every single service and did something prophetic, we would never have the word. So for, my, for me, I'm trying to find the balance. I feel God saying something. I know God's saying something. So now it's trying to find the right time to do that and, and find the right avenue to do that, the right timing to do that, the right place to do that, and so on and so forth. And that is a very, very tricky thing to do because just because we have something to say doesn't mean we need to say it. That's true. That's true. I think there's, I've said this before, there's more maturity in somebody that can hold a prophetic word than there is to somebody that cannot. Oh, I got something to say. I got to say it right now. Yeah, and, that ha and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, hear me out because I can prophesy to somebody and then Stephen can come up and, and God show them something else and he can prophesy and then somebody else. And I'm not saying that's not wrong. I'm just saying, for me, I felt a click. I, God has given me direction. Oh, I hate that song. 
God has given me a direction. And when it's time to release me, you'll see what I'm talking about because I'll explain it as I'm doing it. So I'm just waiting for the release to do that and the timing to do that. I've got the release, it's the timing. So we're talking about positive thinking, we're talking about positive minds. Negative lives produce, negative thoughts produce negative lives. <coughs> Is it possible to neg never have a negative thought? Impossible. Well, wait a minute now. If you're that heavenly minded that you can't think of something on the natural, don't drive behind the wheel of a car. I'm being honest. We, we have to, we live in a world that is so visually stimulated. Everything is a distraction. Good and bad. We were in Florida, and, and we were uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and this was before Irene and uh, Donna had gotten there. Uh, we were walking on the, on the strip. What is that street there where we went for the food, for the food there? But we went to the beach. So, and it's, I don't, I see a couple of nice cars around here and stuff like that. But not like, oh, Lamborghini. Oh, look at that. And it's like constant head turning going down, the, and it's a one way. So you're walking, and you're constantly, you know, I'm looking at cars, guys. And... You're looking, at, you understand that, but you're constantly looking at something and what it does, when your head turns, oh, your body goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. He, Sam turns like this, when he's driving with his blinker, I say, okay, put your left blinker on. This is what he does. Every time, every time. Now, and I'm thinking about this, how spiritual is that? How spiritual is that, that our mind will turn your body and your hands every time, good and bad. Good and bad. And I'm talking very, you guys know me, I'm simple. If I can't understand it, I'm not going to preach it. I'm keeping this simple. Our thoughts will distract us right and left every single time. And that scares me. On a daily basis, we need to renew our minds. And, and now we're going to talk about Emily. She has to go through this radiation. And I've never heard of this before. This is all experimental. She has to go next week for this radiation in her body. It is so intense. They are, it's, it's a stem cell, which is what we're raising the money for because it's very expensive. Stem cell rejuvenation where they literally destroy by chemo and radiation all of something, Lindsay would probably understand this better than I would, something in your body and then they replenish it with new stem cells. She literally has, she comes out, she's 18 years old, she's going to be like an infant baby with her immune system. She has to have all of her tetanus shots and booster shots all over again. I don't understand it. But he said to me, She's going to be like a whole new person coming out like a baby with her immune system. So they have to literally drain and delete and de destroy everything in her physical body, which is where her problem is because that's what's eating her body, and put new stem cells in to replenish the old so that her body starts to rejuvenate her own white blood cells and, and red blood cells and her whole immune system. She's being rebooted all over again. That's what he said to me. How about that in the spirit? This is how you renew your mind on a daily basis. Not just Gabe loves Psalms 150. He'll read it every single day, four times a day. I said, like, listen, you need something more than that. You need to start reading in Ephesians chapter 1 and start going through the scriptures that way. There are four, five, six scriptures, a chapter before you go to school. Psalms 150 ain't going to keep you from the fiery darts. Psalms 150 isn't going to keep you from what your friends are talking about or showing or they're not going to keep you from all of that stuff. So this word on a daily basis is what we need to change our minds. That's the bottom line. A negative thought will produce a negative life. Okay, so a positive, a positive thought and a positive mindset will produce what? Positive, thank you for answering that. It will absolutely pr pr a positive life. But 
it is so not impossible. It is so not easy to do because of the distractions of life. We need those spiritual blinders so that when we turn to see something on the side, we don't veer to the right or the left with every wind of doctrine. Let's say it that way there. We don't say, and this is, pastor said it all the time, when that you sit down and start to pray and that parade starts, you got to shut that mind down. God, you must remember, this is what your word says about me. This is what your word says to me. We talk about that all the time and it's not an easy thing to do. But when those negative thoughts come in and those negative intentions come in and those bad thoughts come in, we must get to the point where we have to say, no, 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 God, you said. You said. So you're going to say something? Because the thoughts are going to come by. It's when we begin to entertain those thoughts. Oh, you mean? Ah, uh, okay. That's next week. That's next week because it's true. Because it's not just having a bad thought and deleting it. It's what we do with it. Do we entertain it? Do How far does that go before we say, okay, God, that's enough. All of a sudden... Mm, all right, I'm going to end there. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for today. God, I thank you, Lord, for the written word, the spoken word. I thank you, Lord, for going beyond, even though it was all discombobulated. Thank you for going beyond what I put on paper so that you hear my heart and your desire for this time and in this hour, God. Let your plan keep your hedge of protection around about this house today, God, for your other word to come forth, God, that you might bring forth that spiritual warfare and that spiritual mentality and that prophetic vision that you were talking about, God. Let it start here, God. That's what pastor was praying last night. Why not here? Why not now? In Jesus' name. All right.